this is Francis from Easel. Today I am going to do a very quick video that is essentially going to be a quick start guide for 3D carving. We have some longer form videos which I'll link in the description below that kind of go into detail on certain functions, but this video is intended to, to kind of highlight what to do and how to get everything set up very quickly so you can jump right into carving. Um, and so I'm going to just kind of jump right in really quick. The first thing that I need to do is upload my 3D file. So to do that, I'll click on Project. I'll get the drop down menu, and one of the options will be Import 3D STL. When I click on that, I'll be shown a window, and I'll be given the option to choose File. Um, I'll also be given the option to have my file scale, my model to scale to fit my material. In this case, I'm gonna it's checked by default, but I'm going to check it and keep it checked um, because I want it to fit the material that I have. Um, and I'll show you the kind of caveat to that when, when I upload my file. I'm gonna choose my file. I've got this one right here. When I open it, um, we can see I'm now in the 3D carving screen, which looks a little different than the two-dimensional carving screen. And uh, essentially, I see my model, which is bounded by this purple um, box. Sometimes it looks like it's cutting through it, but if you look at it from the bottom it's actually just the uh, the bounds of the model so it's not nothing to worry about if you see it kind of moving through it's just showing you the bounds of the model in relation to the material uh, the material is outlined by this green box and the first thing I always check when I import a 3d file is I look at it from the side because this green box represents the height of my material and I can see that my model sticks out and so if I were to generate this toolpad um, we can see that everything that's above the material isn't going to get carved, and that's not what I want. So uh, I'm going to fix this with two changes. The first is I'm going to increase my material thickness. You can adjust your material dimensions by clicking here and choosing the material type and the dimensions. The width and the length are fine. I think 12 by 8 is fine, but I'm going to change the thickness to uh, 3 quarters of an inch or, or 0.75 of an inch. Um, and we can still, that, still see that my model is still outside the bounds of my material, but now I'm going to change the size of my model. And you can do that on the, this right-hand toolbar bar where it says model at the top of the screen. If you scroll down, uh, there's size. I can change it in the X and Y dimension. I can lock those dimensions together. I can change it on the Z dimension, or I can lock the X, Y, and Z together. In this case, I'm just going to change it on the Z dimension to match the thickness of my material. So uh, that's 0.75 of an inch. And now I, as I'm looking at it from the side, I can see that my model is within the bounds of my material, which is exactly what I want. Um, next, I'm going to look at the different cut styles. And there are three cut styles to choose from. In this instance, since I am cutting out a sign, I'm going to keep it at full depth of cutout, full depth cutout and use tabs. But um, I am going to kind of show the other two really quickly. Rectangle relief. Uh, you can set a cut depth and then basically padding for a rectangle cutout around your model. One thing to know about when, when setting the cut depth is that some of my model is, is a lighter shade and some of my model is a darker shade. If it's a darker shade, that means that it's under the cut depth that's been set for my rectangle relief and I need to adjust it. So you want to adjust that so that all of the parts of the model that you want to be carved are going to be carved and, and highlighted or, or that lighter color. Um, and then you can adjust the padding for the rectangle uh, right below that. The other is model boundary relief. It also has a cut depth setting, so you'll see the grayed out areas if it's, if it's above those parts. So that's something to keep in mind. And uh, essentially, you can add padding around that, but it's essentially just going to cut down to the cut depth around your model. Um, and so uh, those are the other two styles. In this case, I'm going to use full depth cutout with auto tabs. Um, when you're using tabs, you can choose to edit the tabs. You can't add more tabs, but you can select them and move them around. It's really great if you have like a model weak point and you don't really want a tab there uh, or that point to be holding the material in place when it's carving. So uh, always double check your tabs. Um, and then the last thing I want to do before I start carving here is just check my, my roughing and my finishing bit. Um, I'm going to use a quarter inch roughing bit is going to kind of take out the most material the quickest. So I think that's going to work fine. And then my finishing bit is an eighth inch bit. All finishing bits for 3D carves have to be ball nose bits. Those are the only ones that uh, are selectable. 
So you want to make sure you have a ball nose bit. Um, an eighth inch is good. If you're looking for a little more detail, maybe use a 16th inch bit. You can also try reducing the step over manually in the cut settings, and that can also help with detail. Um, so those are some, some kind of settings. But essentially now my carve is ready to go. Um, I, I just kind of walked through everything really quickly. Um, and again, I'll have uh, the videos that we have that just have a little more information on the different parts of 3D if you're looking for a more detailed kind of instruction. Have a wonderful day. To learn more, head over to easel.com.